Well, we've got the first streaming NC-17 movie, and I think it's probably the first movie, streaming or otherwise, to get that rating in a few years. NC-17, kind of a, a dead rating these days, but uh, it comes to us courtesy of a fictionalized version of Marilyn Monroe's life. Let's talk about Netflix's Blonde. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new Netflix film, Blonde. This is streaming right now, and uh, like I mentioned, it is NC-17. Uh, I'm honestly not quite sure why that even matters, because Netflix really only has sort of two modes, either for kids only, or you can watch everything. You know, if you're able to watch TVMA, if you're able to watch R-rated movies, you'll be able to watch this. So I'm not even sure why it really matters. Um, other than the fact that they released it in select theaters for a week um, ahead of the premiere on Netflix just to, I guess, um, make it officially awards eligible. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into a little bit with the rating uh, as we go on here. But first, I want to welcome you into Dan Reviews. And thank you for finding this video. We've got tons of TV and movie review videos on the channel here to uh, peruse. And uh, if you're not one of my subscribers already, would love to have you click that subscribe button down below there um, or comment or like this video. All of that does help the channel out. And uh, I love comments, too, because I love interacting with you guys uh, about the different movies and, and whatnot. But uh, so let's talk about this. Like I mentioned up top, it is a fictionalized version of Marilyn Monroe's life. So even, you know, biopics that take some liberties here and there, like Elvis or Bohemian Rhapsody. This uh, takes it several shades further. Um, it is based on a book by Joyce Carol Oates, and it is listed as a fiction book. So, um, you know, definitely we're, we're dealing with people that did exist. Certainly Marilyn Monroe existed, um, and it deals with movies that she really was in. So there are things here that could be construed as, um, you know, somewhat of a biopic feel, but a lot of what transpires is um, a little bit uh, hyper-realistic and a, a bit um, exaggerated and, and whatnot. So um, it was written and directed by uh, Andrew Dominic, who I was not familiar with, but I looked him up. He's only directed a handful of films, two Brad Pitt movies um, that I didn't really care for. The one was okay, The Assassination of um, the, the Coward. It's got like the longest title, The Assassination of the Coward, James Ford by whatever, I don't know, um, Jesse James something, all right, it's a long title, and then Killing Them Softly, which I really didn't like, I think I maybe even failed it, um, so he's got those two under his belt, and then he's done not one, but two documentaries about, uh, the sort of hipster, quirky musician, Nick Cave, I don't know why we need two biopics, um, about that gentleman, I, you know, I'm not, a fan, so I didn't really watch any of them, but I think one of them just came out this year. Um, so maybe at some point I will get to it for my 2022 list as I'm going over my documentaries. But anyway, um, but so he's, you know, done some real people stuff before. Um, so obviously taking on Marilyn Monroe, you know, a, a real figure, but this is far from a documentary, certainly. Um, but like I mentioned, it's not even really a biopic. So, uh, Ana de Armas, who is, I guess, probably best known um, right now for Knives Out, the uh, first movie in that now franchise. Um, but she is really making a name for herself. She's picking up all of these different uh, acting roles. Um, she was in a uh, movie earlier this year with Ben Affleck. Um, I can't remember what that was called, but it was like a streaming movie. It was a thriller. Um and uh, they started dating. She kind of got her name in the news from that. Um, but right away, I was sort of like, all right, this is sort of weird casting um, because, you know, Marilyn Monroe is an all-American, you know, blonde bombshell. Now, of course, she wasn't blonde in real life. That was fake. Um, but Ana de Armas uh, is you know, Cuban, I believe, um, or something like that. And I, so I read up a little bit about it because I'm like, this is sort of odd casting because she's got a, a pretty thick accent. I will say she loses the accent for some of the movie, um, but you can still hear that it's there. And Marilyn Monroe had no such accent. Um, so it's a little weird and, and jarring in that regard. Um, so I looked it up and it turns out uh, Monroe's mom was born in Mexico, but not to... Mexican people like she's she has no you know Mexican blood as far as I could figure out 
in her. Not that Mexican is even Cuban, but whatever. Um, you know, we're, we're so hypersensitive now about, oh, this person, you know, ha can't play this person and, and whatever. Um, so I just thought it was odd casting because she's got that accent um, that, she, and, and she looks like her. I mean, my God, she looks the part like nobody's business. Um, but, you know, as I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? This is a fictionalized version of Marilyn Monroe. So if she doesn't sound exactly like her, if she doesn't maybe look exactly like her, which I think she does, uh, look the part at least, I'm okay with it. Um, and she is easily one of the best things about this movie. Um, so, you know, another case of sort of don't judge the book by its cover, you know, I was sort of thinking that's weird casting, but then I saw it and I'm like, okay, other than when her, when her accent sort of slips in a little bit, it's not much because Marilyn Monroe talked in this breathy way. And so it's, it's pretty easy to cover that up. But, uh, even the Monroe estate, uh, said like, we approve of this casting 100%, like Ana de Armas is Marilyn Monroe. Um, so, okay, sure that, you know, fine. Um, but <laughs> unfortunately not much else in the movie ends up working. I will say, um, that the recreations of certain very famous photographs or movie scenes, um, that they sort of insert Ana de Armas in, um, I thought worked really well, looked seamless, looked great. Um, and the style of this movie is very, very interesting. It's very artsy, um, which maybe I don't always go in for, but in something like this where I think um, Dobrik wanted to make it, or Dominic, whatever his name is, the director Dominic, um, wanted to make it clear, I think, that, you know, this was a little bit of hyper-reality, um, you know, we're not really doing, you know, beat by beat, this was her life. Um, so I think a lot of that stuff can be forgiven. And as such, you know, I, I sort of like some of the interesting techniques they used. Um, you know, it went often from color to black and white, depending on what was needed for the scene or if what was being recreated was a black and white photograph, uh, or whatever. He would put the whole scene in black and white and they fiddled a little bit with the aspect ratio. Some things that, that I can get behind, it's maybe a little too artsy for its own good. But uh, the problem here, I think, um, really comes in the respect that I, I don't think this movie really cares that much about Marilyn Monroe. I think it is just a three-hour um, tour of basically her misery, and she led this horrible life, and everyone in her life abused her and was horrible to her. And look, Maybe, you know, part of that is true. We certainly saw that uh, with the Judy Garland movie with Renee Zellweger. But, like, it's just over and over again. It gets so repetitive. And then the sexed-up nature of it, and that's, by the way, the reason for the NC-17, because, of course, in, you know, PG-13 movies, we can see people just, you know, being sliced off at the head and, uh, you know, murdered in all these gory ways and tortured and whatever, but, uh, you know, you throw one curse word in there or, or show, uh, you know, a vagina. Well, that's an NC-17 or an R for sure. Um, and there is a lot of nudity in this movie. Um, and there is, uh, there are some sex scenes that are intense. Um, certainly, you know, uh, one very abusive sex scene comes to mind um, that I think really is, is what pushed the NC-17 a little bit. But, um, you know, Ana de Armas is topless for a lot of this movie. Um, you know, just showing Monroe uh, in the bedroom, just sitting, you know, writing a letter or whatever. She's just got no top on. Um, and, and that's fine. I mean, I'm sure she probably lived that way. Why not? Um, but, uh, you know, it's not gratuitous, you know, to me. So the NC-17 is silly. Um, I, I've never really agreed with uh, a lot of what the MPA stands for there. Um, but that's neither here nor there. It does not affect this movie's uh, enjoyment at all because I do think the nudity uh, is tastefully done. Um, Julianne Nicholson, who plays uh, Monroe's mother, we do see her in uh, full frontal in an earlier scene. And we see sort of how, uh, you know, insane of a lifestyle uh, Monroe was was leading as a child um, in those opening couple scenes. But um, But it was just over and over. It was like... How much can this woman take and how much can we as the audience take watching, you know, one more miserable scene after the other, um, you know, knowing that, well, this is America's sweetheart, you know, and look, I don't doubt that she lived uh, a, a horrible life, um, you know, once she got her addiction issues in and, and all of that, she died quite young, obviously. 
Um, but I, I just, I, it felt to me like this movie was sort of, here's everyone that's circling around Marilyn Monroe, not necessarily how she felt about it, other than like miserable. We never really, I felt like got into that, that psyche. And in a three hour movie, I think we could have done that. Um, so yeah, a, a really good performance from Ana de Armas. I wouldn't say it's great. I would say it's really good. It's not on the level of Austin Butler and Elvis, uh, to, to, you know, bring up a recent, um, you know, 50s, 60s, uh, type of Hollywood story. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think we'll be seeing her come award season. Um, but yeah, this one, I, and it's clearly love it or hate it. It was at 50%. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes with critics the day I watched it. I think now it's down to 45. But still, I mean, that it's a pretty, like, even split between people that really like what this movie is about and uh, people that I, I think were left a bit cold by it. And that's where I stand. Um, I leave Blonde with a C-. minus. All right, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.